come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Welcome to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. You can find us every Saturday, whether you like it or not, on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, TuneIn Radio, and more. We sit around and we talk about movies. Yes, movies. What kind of movies, Colin? Uh, good movies, bad movies, and everything in between. What's and between good movies and bad movies? Cult oh, movies. Okay, yeah. movies. Yeah. And sometimes yeah, awesome movies. movies, right? That's on the wrong side of that. <laughs> yeah. So these are the Saturday, the internet radio superstars. Sean. Travis. Holly. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watched the movie chosen by... Me, Holly. And it was called... <laughs> the Cabin in the Woods. And it, what year was it made? 2012. And well, it was released 2012. Yes. Right. Yeah. It was made like two years two, earlier or yeah. something like that. Yeah. They're like, Thor's big. Release it. Yeah. <laughs> it was like an MGM production. It was production. an MGM production and they went bankrupt. Oh, wow. So it got put on hold. And then yeah. Lionsgate picked it up, put it out. Yeah. Yeah. But after yeah. Chris Hemsworth had been cast in Thor. Yeah. So it was one of two movies, I think, that Chris Hemsworth had on the shelf. The other one being? Uh, Hold on. I know this. Oh. Fuck. I know this. Yeah. Uh, Three. Two. Gives a hint. Rush. One. The remake of Red Dawn. That's oh, right. that's right. I knew that. Because they had to like, we Should've can't put Chinese people shelf. in here. Yeah. Should have kept it on the shelf. Because yeah. he was he was actually cast in Red Dawn and Thor because the people at MGM watched the dailies right. from Cabin in the Woods and they're like, yeah, I like this guy. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's yeah. how he got cast. Yeah, because I assume Joss Whedon was in the Marvel Universe at the time. The cabin in the woods, like at least. Well, he was talking with them because, like, before Joss Whedon was even um, picked to direct, Kevin Feige went to him, like, dude, like, how would you do an Avengers movie? You know, he was just talking to Joss Whedon because he had written for, you know, uh, Astonishing X Men and Mm -hmm. some, you know, uh, what the Runaway, blah blah blah. He's worked on some Marvel shit, and he does very good character work with all the TV series he's done. Mm -hmm. So it's like we got a bunch of characters we got to bring together. How would you do it? Yeah. yeah. And we're mentioning these people because... They made this movie. <laughs> <laughs> There's Joss, a reason. They wrote this movie. Joss Whedon was a co-writer and producer of this movie. Yeah. I want to say, what, they wrote this while they were doing Angel or something like that, right? It was yeah, after. Like, it was after. They, was it? They, they did it in they, a weekend, didn't the they? Con- they did it like the two days. The concept of this movie began during Buffy and Angel. They, they would keep talking about it and talking about it. And then after the shows were over, they're like, okay, we've got time. We need to make this happen. So they got together... It was Drew Goddard and uh, Joss Whedon yeah. got together in a hotel room and cranked out the script in three days. Yeah, Goddard's not the guy who created the Angel, is it? Was he a show? Well, he's like he, the, no, that was David Greenwald. He was right? a he, he was, was a, a writer. He directed some episodes, yeah. I think, but he was a writer. He was the showrunner for the first season of Daredevil mm-hmm. for Netflix. Yeah, Oscar nominated uh, screenwriter for The Martian. The Martian, yeah. yeah. So now he's never going to go back to this kind of stuff, which is unfortunate. Is I bet he would. I think. Uh, Very well. Well, I think they took Drew Goddard off of the first season of Daredevil to help him with uh, Spider Man and I all think. that bullshit. Oh, yeah. That they yeah. Were trying to do. Sinister Six and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, maybe that was it. Maybe it wasn't even the Homecoming Spider Man. No, no, yeah, it was Disney's before when they were trying. Yeah, to Yeah, maybe that you're home. right. We're going to launch six movies before the first yeah, two like, do good. Spider Man's <laughs> not going to be in any of them. It's going <laughs> to make millions. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah. So, this was like, what? This was a pretty happy surprise in theaters in 2012. You're like, oh, this movie looks weird. Joss Whedon, you know what? Serenity uh, was a few years before this. Yeah. Yeah. So, everybody knew, like, well, shit, you know. Well, his big name was, you know, for Buffy the Vampire Slayer, right? Oh, yeah. One of my favorite shows of all time. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Like, and so it's Joss Whedon's going to do a horror movie? I mean, that was like, I remember the Chong. big uh, hook, you know, leading yeah. in. And then the fact that he had to wait, and it was this mysterious thing just called The Cabin in the Woods. And so that conjures, I guess, images of <laughs> Evil, Evil Dead. Dead Evil which Dead, is, yeah. we're going to say that is like the Cabin in the Woods movie. Kind of, it's like the first half. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, just as what, far as movies what, yeah. go. As far like, as references, <laughs> yeah, you, the first thing you think of. Yeah, Evil, Evil Dead. Dead. Yeah. And even in this movie, a lot of the uh, imagery was... You know, it's just unfortunate, maybe, for the filmmakers that, like, shortly after this, they put an Evil Dead remake into production. So, right. like, yeah. in my mind, there's still, like, moments where I'm like, is that? Oh, no, no, that's from the Evil Dead remake. Yeah. That's I still Cabin think in the woods. audiences. I mean, the cabins look the same, you know? Right. I mean, yeah. there's a lot of that lead up to getting there. 
I still oh, think a lot saying. of audiences weren't ready for this idea. You know, they weren't ready for this weird take on like a That's behind the do. scenes horror movie. It's almost like it's a meta horror movie. It's right? a meta horror Very movie, much. but it's almost as if like the people running the show are the filmmakers. You know what yeah. I mean? It's like the whole like, well, what if filmmakers actually had to put together a real horror movie and what would their excuse be and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, and specifically they're putting together an American horror movie, mm-hmm. right? I mean, because they even address that in the film. Yes. You know, that there's these different scenarios mm-hmm. for different countries, which we get to see, you know, little yeah. bits and pieces of. Which I, the we're going to talk the, about that later. Like, that confuses me a little bit. But the idea of like the five kids, you know, in going off to the cabin in the woods or whatever, you know, right. and then being attacked and and killed by slashers from the, you know, whatever undead slashers is like an American movie trope. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, well, we pegged that one down. Well, uh, <laughs> goodbye, folks. <laughs> like, no our next said. movie will be <laughs> Colin's choice. Well, here's the thing. I go. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I forgot to. We should have front loaded it with this. Uh, every episode this month, since we're in the month of October, uh, each one of the Freak Show members is picking uh, are going to give us a list of their top ten favorite horror movies of all time you've heard travis's on uh what episode the, the bad, bad seed, seed. Mm-hmm. we heard sean's on the return of the living dead three podcast and holly is up tonight so tonight. if you stick with us after our wrap-ups you're gonna hear holly's top 10 horror movies yes. of all time please please yeah. stick with us will Let's cabin see. in the woods be on it who knows uh-huh. who knows so here's the okay so you want to get into the thick of this yeah as we get into the movie there's i guess there's a moment in the trailer where they show. Okay, so we're assuming, folks, that you've seen this movie, I guess, because we're going to have to talk about it and it's going to spoil it. But there's a moment in the trailer where they show the bird, you know, there's this hawk crashes into the invisible fence. Yeah. yeah. And I thought the trailer showed the motorcycle crash. Did it? I thought. Because that's the have. first thing. That's what, the first thing that weirded me about, out about this movie when I saw the trailer. I was like, "What the fuck is this? Why yeah. is there some weird? Was this aliens? Yeah. Then it's and like, is it a sci-fi thing? Yeah, right. it's very confusing. But yeah. I like how this movie doesn't like. You think you know the story? It doesn't bury the lead, right? I like how you get going right away with. With the we be- start behind with the, the scenes, yeah, we start yeah. with them. That way, you you just get going on like what's going on with these guys. These two guys are at work and they're yeah. just kind of riffing about like the incredible Richard Jenkins and Bradley Whitford. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, my yeah. God. oh Jesus! Yes. Oh my God! I mean, like they're perfectly perfect. cast, perfect <laughs> tone. Like they had to know just by reading the script that they had found like this is one of those like yeah. those those two parts. Well, they're are almost great. the main characters. Yeah, you yeah. know, I'm like sorry. That's like well, and, the, and I mean. They are Joss Whedon and Drew Goddard. Those characters are them. Sure. Yeah, yeah, right, they're right, them. Right. So you know that like they had a special place in their heart for these two characters. Yes. They're like, who can we get? Obviously. Well, they're, they're the most interesting characters. Yeah. Like, they really are. Well, they have, like, I get the bummed best, out when the movie leaves them. They have the best <laughs> banter. Well, I wonder if that's because, you know, like after a certain point in the setup to this movie, I mean, you've got five kids, you got to introduce them. And they go to a cabin in the woods and they meet the harbinger, which he's hilarious. But at some point, <laughs> you're kind of like, okay, you know, I understand where this mm-hmm. section of the movie is going because I've seen this type of horror movie right. all through my life. So yeah. is that why it loses kind of because, an interest? Yeah, because it's not that interesting. You know, well, you're and that's, and they're that's setting why they... up all these just kind of, I mean, except for like the harbinger you were talking about is is, you know, uh, in a reference to, like, the crazy Ralph from, like, right. Friday 13th mm-hmm. or, like, the hillbilly guy that's like, you'll never come back again, you know, yeah. that sort of deal. He's always the guy at the gas station. I mean, it's perfect. Yeah. You've perfect. seen this so many fucking times in Wrong Turn or Texas Oh, yeah, Chainsaw right. Or- right. There's always got to be the creepy guy. And it's perfect that they that they open with the behind the scenes because if they had opened with introducing us to the kids, it wouldn't have captured us right away. No, they had, no, you might find like, like, yeah. I've seen this like I've seen Why this a million times. Movie? They had to use that as the opening. But they, they give you, to. but they give you the opening of the uh, of the what should we call them of the guys behind the scenes? It's the underground. <laughs> yeah, but it doesn't tell you yeah. what they're doing. Like right. it doesn't say how are they a part of this horror movie that I've been seeing the trailers for. Mm-hmm. I didn't see any of this in it. What well, are these guys doing? But that's my my problem with it is the marketing of this kind of ruined the experience for me because the lead up was it's 
you know, Joss Whedon, Drew Goddard doing a cabin in the woods horror movie. You're like, well, how are they going to do it? And then when, as soon as you saw the marketing, it was like the marketing was showing you the behind the scenes stuff, which oh, I yeah. think if I hadn't seen that stuff in the trailer, like if the trailer, I mean, I know it's a thin tightrope for a movie studio to, yeah, you know, yes, because they can't say because people would this, be pissed. It's is right. just well, would they? Or would they yeah, be? because they'd be like, I came to see a fucking stupid like in the woods horror movie, and this was like a comedy with like you know they'd be was, pissed. See, well, I mean, probably. Dude, you would, I, I, would, I, would, have, I would hope have they'd be pleasantly it. surprised yeah. by what they but got. But I get that yeah. they're saying, like, well, this looks like every other horror. You know, if you cut all that stuff yeah. out, just give a trailer of, like, True. kids in the Because I didn't see like fucking, every other horror. I saw maybe Wrong Turn 1, right. and that's it. Like, I was, like, done with modern-day horror movies <laughs> after Wrong Turn in theaters. I was just like, I'm cool. You know, like. <laughs> right, and that's probably why, like you said, they were showing more than just the horror movie parts just, in the trailer yeah. because yeah. I didn't want people well, to be like, I've seen this movie, kinda, I'm not going to see that. They this. wanted you to have almost like an M. Night Shyamalan, kind of like there's a bigger secret yeah. to this, you well, know? I mean, that it's is not part of the thing. Just... It, well, the tagline was like, you think you know the story. Yeah, you think and you know the story. Just, yeah. Yeah. So you're like, it's going to be something else. But I do like, is, I mean, as generic as the main characters are, I do like how, like, right away... Which is kind of the point. That's exactly... They're the point, yeah. but I... They I, don't start out that way. And well, exactly, better. because, you know, like, I mean... If you just watch this the first time, you probably won't get it. But, you know, you go through the multiple viewings. You see how Chris Hemsworth, uh, he's like your jock character. But, you know, he's knowledgeable of these actual, uh, uh, like, college. Um, he's a, like a philosophy. smart guy. Yeah, yeah. 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 He's not the yeah. dumb jock at the But he beginning. does, like, I mean, but he does, like, throw a football. I mean, he does. He, they do fool you. They yes. fool you. Fool you. They fool you. They fool you. and fru- I fool you, fool. <laughs> <laughs> and even with the uh, his girlfriend, the blonde chick, how she automatically starts talking sex, and you know, like, do people really want to get their friends laid that much? Is it just horror movies that are like you're getting fucked this week? No, weekend. my friends do that, but all it's the, time. the hair dye. It's, it's already it's, started. We find out it's the hair dye that, like, whatever. But like, I mean, I even made a comment like, only in horror movies do people talk about fucking each other <laughs> for the first fifteen minutes because the writers got like no other way to show how these people relate. They're like. Yeah, everything I, you know, wait till you see what I packed away, you know? like Otherwise, they're going to be talking about their chemistry homework or something. Or there, something. You know? but, I mean, but that's also, like, for the viewer, just like, oh, this is what they're talking about? Maybe well, yeah, expect because, something later. Well, like, you're, it's to hook yeah. them in, or at least more so back earlier when they were making these But movies. you're, it's setting up as the way all these horror movies do, like, the types, you know? Which the movie then, you know, toward the end of it, it like, actually basically has playing cards on the wall that's like, these are the... The archetypes yeah. that you see yes. in all these movies, the athlete, the virgin, the whore, the fool, the scholar and the scholar. Like, you know, I mean, like they mm-hmm. are the types of the American slasher film, you know, mm-hmm. and it's like, so it's introducing them. But see, I, I guess I, like I didn't see the Kurt Hemsworth character too much as like the brainy guy because you didn't get to uh, meet him that it's long. literally that, that much, one no. scene where, yeah. like, because he makes the books, he makes books, the jokes yeah. about like, oh, who gave you these or whatever fuck. But then he's like, he's like, but no, <laughs> really, you if you, if you want to impress you. your professor, <laughs> yeah. like, read this book. I mean, that's it. That's the one like little line you get that like, oh, this guy is. I mean, except for the when the stoner says he's a sociology major or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Those are the two lines of the movie that like show before you before this he's movie smart. started, he was a different guy. You know, that's basically what right. Marty's saying, yeah. right? Yeah. Which I guess is, you know, I, I, li- I appreciate that from a writing standpoint, mm-hmm. but it's like, and I guess, you know, on, on the second viewing of the movie, you know, you sit there and you're like, okay, they are laying this in there. It does oh, work. He, he does yes. have a couple little quips, like some short lines that you may, that you may miss, that we, it references like things that he probably would learn in school. Like mm. it, he has a few little lines that it's really hard to catch that I'm like, yeah, that that's a sociology major. Mm-hmm. But they're so subtle. It's like you have to... You have to be on it to catch it. Well, the, uh, they got, so they, well, they have like the, I guess the thing that like throws this whole, well, okay, so where should we start? I guess should we plow into the movie or just talk about these different character types. Well, that's the, like, yeah, because that's the promise. Like, I don't think the, like, actual, except for the behind the scenes stuff, the actual story is not that interesting. I mean, except for when the, the butthead starts figuring out. <laughs> shit right well That's, in the cellar is for a walk <laughs> <laughs> who's talking yeah <laughs> and we find out that the reason that the pot like they're using these 
the the guys in the control room were using all these pheromones and lighting effects and all this stuff yes. to actually you know encourage these archetypal behaviors except it's not working on the pothead and they can't figure out why mm. and it's because he got his pot from somewhere else like at the last minute right did they mention that when he pulled up he says he's got some like awesome stash he keeps his secret around. stash yeah yeah, yeah. So, so the, they don't know stash. about his secret stash. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they replaced whatever pot or whatever they had, but they didn't know about his secret stash for his great shit. That right there makes me wonder, like, how early do they start working on these people? They had like, to. When did, to dye how did her they hair? these people? Right. How did they, they even get his, I mean, that's what's funny at the end where that, you know, the dude don't even have a cousin, you know? Like, how did yeah. they even get him, they get them to that cabin? Right. Yeah, you know? that's what, but I think that'd be That's the, a the funny cool joke. They're like, I don't even think he has a cousin. It's like, so what <laughs> happened, you know? Right? Well, that's what I wonder. I'm like, how did they, how did they start yeah. this? Because they got to do this every, you think? They've been casing also, out these people for months. Do you months, think they just they send them to the same cabin when every they, time? When yeah. do they do it? Every yeah. 10 years? Like, that, they don't, don't give you a... Is it yearly? Did they say annual? I think they said it's annual. It feels like it's annual. every year? I think so. Huh. I'd love to see like the recruitment process or how yeah. do you yeah. screen your, I mean, there's not applicants, but they got to choose people. They have to find right. like a group, you know, of well, and, college kids. Yeah, who, right. It's, it's a young group. So you know that it's narrowed down to where can we find kids? So it must be like a college, like or screening whatever. process they just or match something. There. Right. They'll yeah. look at their transcripts for the school. Well, like, yeah, well, you get your this, federal the loans the, the, <laughs> yeah. the, for college. So yeah. yeah, they got that shit. <laughs> yeah. And it all leads them basically to a moment in the Evil Dead cellar where they get to choose. Oh, that's almost the scene, right? Where the, oh, the yeah, cellar yeah. door opening over the shoulder. The, the design of that cabin yeah. is like, that's the Evil <laughs> Dead cabin, right? That's my favorite line. Because it whips open so violently. <laughs> yeah, the wind must have blown it open. Right. Well, that's, yeah, all the little, and like, how funny, does that like. make sense? Right. right. Well, that's what's funny, because they're all, yeah, everybody's, like, looking into the hole and the stoner's looking at them, you know? Yeah, that's right. what's funny about it is. Because uh, yeah. he's aware that they're all acting weird. Right? Yeah, he doesn't Outside know why. Of how they usually yeah. act. Yes, he's like, my friends aren't idiots. There's no way that they'd be yeah. okay with this. Right. <laughs> yeah. But it's all engineered so they'll make a choice of their of you know what type of creature is basically going to mm-hmm. come after them or mm-hmm. set of creatures or whatever by them. Yeah. And I thought that was genius. Genius. You know? It is because I'd they get it. down in the basement. The basement's full of all these artifacts, and each one of them's picking it up in these like you know. The music keys yeah. up and the, you know everything gets slow. And is she going to put on the necklace from yeah. some witch or whatever? Mm-hmm. Is he going to blow into the, the conch? Yeah, <laughs> the yeah. conch and oh, summon the, conch. the merman. Oh my god! <laughs> you <laughs> want it so bad. Now you want to know my problem with that? Like this, watching it this time around, just to be like devil's they advocate. The most and the, boring. Uh, no, <laughs> that yeah, that too. They picked the most boring. Uh, no, but the, the problem is, is it's too set up because. The Harbinger says you're going to the Becker play. You know, I was like, it's too set up for the redneck zombie thing, right? Like, I can't imagine any of those other scenarios happening in that cabin in the woods. Right. Right. I think that's my problem with this movie. It's just like, uh, it's like... They, there's almost no other choice but to do the zombies. That's the location, right? And that's when they that happened. I was, I remember the first I mean, time watching. It's almost a letdown. It's just like, oh, we're just gonna do I, that. That was my problem. Like even in theaters, like I fucking thrill. Like I love this fucking movie, or I love the experience seeing it uh, in theaters. But that was my problem watching. It's like, oh fuck, redneck zombie. Like this is what we're doing right, because maybe happened. because the whole like wrong turn and it's like. God damn it, we just got past all this shit. And I get it, you're making a horror movie that's representing what the horror movies are right. today. The, mm. the, it's the easiest way to go with that. Because imagine if it was the merman. How do you work that into the cabin? Or whatever. Oh, the wolf. The they're on a lake. Yeah, 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 yeah. they're on the lake. The wolf. So wolf like, but what about the killer clown? Them? Or whatever. Yeah. The fu- you know, it's just like there's things that wouldn't <laughs> make fucking dragon. sense. Yeah, there's things that wouldn't make sense. <laughs> Especially well, since the Harbinger guy tells them the Buckner place or whatever. Fuck. Yeah. So it's already like, hello, you know, you're going to. You're going to meet the Buckner. I don't know. Yeah, it's just kind of one of those things. It's too centered around. Like, I get what they were doing. I totally get their idea. But, like, it's too, uh, too like, it had to be, point. yeah, it had to be the zombie. It couldn't really be anything else. It so it's like zombies. It was zombie redneck. Zombie redneck, zombie. yeah. That's a good the scene when all the, <laughs> when all the like underground the people between... are betting on. Uh, on yeah. the whiteboard. And yeah. Like, what's, what's what they're, they're going to find. <laughs> This movie has like perfect com- comedic oh, timing in awesome. those scenes. I, I mean, it basically plays all the stuff from the 
horror movie section of the movie relatively straight, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it's yeah. the stuff that's happening like behind the scenes. I mean, like I just remember uh, what Bradley Whitford like trailing up, like uh, you know, it's you know, he's saying some speech and it's really heartfelt. And it's like it's I'm almost is the, I'm almost rooting for this girl. She's got heart. She's, she's got, got heart. heart. She's yeah. got, and he looks over to the side like, while he's tequila talking. He's like, is <laughs> my lady. Because yeah. the party people arrive. I mean, it was just yeah. <laughs> Hysterical. Okay, oh. so the meta movie. I like Colin going hysterical. hysterical. <laughs> he thought it was hysterical, but the way he expressed it, hysterical. Totally straight face. Let's move on. There's a big smile on my face. It doesn't show, but that, no. that's a smile. Uh, so, okay, so yeah, I guess they're supposed, they're asking us to look at the movie mm. as, I mean, the way that I'm reading it, I think it is the way you're supposed to read it, is like the guys in the control room who are basically trying to stave off the awakening of some H.P. Lovecraftian the ancient, uh, yeah. ancient deity that's going to destroy the world mm-hmm. by doing this ritual that sacrifices these people, mm-hmm. but it has to be done every year. Yep. But the guys in the control room are basically the stand-ins for the creative team of movie makers, writers, directors, right. special effects mm-hmm. artists, yes. like all this stuff all being put together. So are they, what is the, what are they you know, because in the movie it says that you know the the sacrifice of these people keeps the sleeper sleeping, and so this doesn't bubble up and destroy the world. Mm-hmm. What's the real world analogy of that? Like, what is what do we as, as audiences, as moviegoers, as like, moviegoers, if we're the audiences going to see these films? Like what? What's to stop it from bubbling I, up in us? Is that what it, is that movies? what they're saying? I mean, that's I've heard that about horror movies. I mean, I'm a, life, I try but... to really look into these sort of things. It's, it's like I to me, this is entertainment. I don't have that with this movie. I don't have that. With You're this, not getting something out. What they're saying? I would murder is, people, but I, I yeah, I don't know. I, I, yeah, I think this is just like an exercise in storytelling. It's an exercise in yeah. I don't know. I don't. I don't see like any big analogies here, unless. What? I mean, the whole idea... I mean, okay, check this out. I mean, I do know the actual analogy, why they did sacrifice people, is just because when things got too plentiful, they'd usually end up running out of food. So you, the more you sacrifice your people, hey, the more plentiful things are because you you get less people. You know, right. that's the idea of sacrifices. We need to get rid of people so other people can live. But why you do know? why do people? Because I, I think this is what the movie's going after. Why I don't does know. it? What does it appease in us? Like it appeases because the gods? why do you know? I mean, like, why do why do people go see slasher movies? Mm-hmm. Why do you go to see attractive young people getting murdered? You know, as an audience. I mean, because there's a paying. It's like because that's what they're kind of talking about. Like, isn't it? I mean, she's like, yeah. There's you know, it's not just. Well, it was it's the, not well, just well, us. She there's said other it's people the whole, watching, like, and it's against youth. It's the whole, you know, it's the whole... Uh, I mean, it's something it's something people are worried about deep down. It's just like, I mean, obviously they're playing on people's fears. And I, I mean, watching this stuff can alleviate that. Um, You're saying it's uh, like the, the dry run of, it's like... The, you, the fear of death, so you're going to yes. see these things. It's where like therapeutic? It's boot camp for your eventual mortality. I mean, it can be depending on what you're watching. I mean, Basically. that's why that's why people like uh, true crime stories, or at least I mean, that's one of the reasons I love true crime, true crime stories because you look at uh, what happens to people, and the reason we're so interested in like gory details and stuff like that, or the specifics of people who like get murdered and everything, is because you want to know like what happened to them, like what did they mm-hmm. do wrong that I can avoid. We're fascinated with what we, with what we don't understand. Right, and how can yeah. I look at it to try and understand it so that I won't be in that situation. Mm-hmm. I mean, Either that or you are, do uh, hate the young, like, you know, because, I, mean, I mean, the origins of the, of the slasher movie or the horror movies, the idea that when people came back from World War II, you know, it was like the first war that people were able to come back, uh, like, you know, fucked up and survive. So they're disfigured and then they're like cast off from society because they're ugly. But it's like, yeah, but I fucking, I became ugly fighting for, you know, America. And now your people are, so that's the idea of where the killer comes from. The people that hate the youth and the pretty ones because, you know, you're, you're old, you're going to die or, you know, you're not as beautiful. You're, you know, well, I get that's are. why you have the antagonist is the redneck zombie redneck right. torture family. That would be the disfigured, you know, like creepy backwoods, you mm-hmm. know, 
family, but the audience, right? The audience, if it's, you know, <clears throat> because, I mean... It, I don't because think it, the focus is on the two guys controlling it. This is fucking Joss Whedon, Drew Goddard. Like, I know, but they're it's the, them living. I don't think they gave us an audience. That the uh, audience will go. Well, the audience they is But the, they didn't give us the a Cthulhu. The, but they didn't whatever. give us a person for the audience to, like, experience this through. This is the filmmakers. They have characters to, like, if you're a filmmaker if you're, or if you're a storyteller... Like, you have two characters to, like, live through, like, oh, it's fun how they manipulate this and they do that and, like, whatever yeah. to fill the story in and to make this make sense. But I don't, for kids, they don't, this is not, like, that type of movie. I do think it's easier to go with the argument that you're kind of living vicariously through the characters you're watching on screen with an actual, I don't want to say actual horror movie, but that's kind of what I mean because they are playing off of, they are playing off of that, so you can't. It's harder to live, like you said. We uh, the, the character that we would identify with. It's a little more skewed in this movie because mm-hmm. they are more focusing on mm-hmm. what Travis said. Yeah, the, the dudes, so, the filmmakers. I think basically. you can make the argument for a normal horror movie, but this one is a little more heightened. Well, in this mm-hmm. one, they're trying to like as best they can because the. I mean, I get it. I get, I'm saying the audience, but I'm using it in quotes. Oh. It's the 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 ancient thing, right? Hmm. They're trying to program this in a way that satisfies a desire that this thing has in order to. You know, this thing just, doesn't just want to sacrifice. He wants to watch these people be punished. Yeah. 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 It, yeah. yeah actually, that is a, a big part. So why do we. Right? Yeah. I suppose that is a big movies. part of horror movies. And uh, yeah. because, you know, mm-hmm. Jason is an interest in instrument of punishment. You know, it's not, I guess, you know, to your point, Travis, about the, you know, the, the, Against you know the uh, the idea of youth, it's like when I was young and watching those movies, I saw avatars of myself mm. in the movie getting killed by you know or my friends. Really, or, you, you know, weren't my... like the Jason guy, really, just being like, "Oh, kill that bitch!" You know, she's such a stuck up fucking preppy. Like you're like, that's the girl that would never date me, kill her. You never thought that. Like, no, that I was the, the people. Yeah, I was. Well, I, I was. No, the, I've never been Jason. I was. You've the, never been Jason. I have been Jason. Yeah, you've because been Jason. Jason is an unstoppable. F- he doesn't die, right? So right. That's where. You well, that's why Outcast. Oh no, I'm just worried about the dying strong. part. He's strong. He doesn't die. He's single minded. You know, I, mean, <laughs> I go the, straight in for the I don't want to die. So I'm gonna identify with that guy. The horror fans that I, I would call either. like the gore hounds. I think they do go in for the fact that they're the outcast. Yes, and they're using this as a stress reliever of like, yeah, watch him die because these yeah, are right. the people like, that I don't accept people, me. But, you right. know, they don't accept me the same way they don't accept the killer or whatever. And I don't need to go to this extent because I can watch like pieces and like whatever the fuck, you know, right. That can do it for me. But that is it. They can get it out. I mean, through that, through whatever character they want to identify. Same with thing as heavy metal or whatever the fuck, right? You're supposed to just like, ah, you know, you're, it's just a fantasy world where you're taking the form of the aggressor instead of the person that feels victimized, mm. you know, as the way an outcast would. Well, it's also like an extension of what was it? The French, the grand Guignol or the, uh, the, it was, I don't know. Well, it was a series. It was a play or a, a type of theater where like gruesome murders were. Oh created, yeah, 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 yeah. Which I think is the extension of the Roman Colosseum, or you know the. They also did the front in France. They did the paintings that were the uh, the stages of death or whatever. Like yeah. death was always prominent in them. Um... But like, why would you know decent civilized people go to watch other people being butchered and eviscerated? You know, because I think it. That was it the first form of liberal Hollywood. <laughs> but it satisfies something within us, maybe something mm. that you don't want to talk about, like in, uh, you know, uh, uh, polite society. Right. But, or you know, that you necessarily can't. Well, desensitize. Yeah, right. Not everybody right? can. But this is the thing I think that they're talking about, like, you know, the dialogue that the Sigourney Weaver, the director, you know, because she shows up she at, at the end, mm-hmm. the, it called the director, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, says something about, like, this is a. It's a ritual that dates back older than, you know, we know. And it's something that's primal and built into the human mm-hmm. condition. It's like this is some type of entertainment that, you know, satisfies mm-hmm. a uh, desire, an urge, uh, you know, or a uh, um, like a therapeutic. It's a therapeutic yeah. mm-hmm. release, you know, of, you know. Same, like how people would go to a public execution. You know, why go watch someone die? Why is that a... Because there's a, a fascination yeah, there, Yeah, right? exactly. With, there's a fascination. Because you know that you're going to die. Yeah, you're so going to die. 
I think you know to see other That's, people you, die. Yeah, it's it's almost like watching yourself die. Yeah, in a weird way. It's the right. only way Just you can experience, experience like, what's it, it without like, you, right. you know, those final moments. without feeling it, because you want to know. Like I know I'm gonna die, but I can see it and just. Mm-hmm. I've always liked the idea that you know, like humans, as the universe experiencing itself. So that's why you would want to look at something die because it's just you know, mm-hmm. it is morbid. It's all about oh, very well, yes. Well, that's it, what we are, man. The morbid curiosity. But in that way, we're, you know, movies we're are like a, as a people. Yeah, but as a, yeah, as a as a just the species, that's because we don't right? see yeah, yeah. it around us all the time. Like if we were living in the third world, we'd be like, God damn it, I want some like. Sunshine lollipops and music, and you know, right? we yeah. don't see it piled up in the street, so we're so fascinated with it. We're so like, oh, oh, oh. right, that we but make movies we, about it to go, yeah. See. If we saw it everywhere, like bo- bodies piled up, we'd, we'd be, be like, like, I don't want to see that movie. Oh, let's go to church, yeah. you know. Like, <laughs> yeah, I want some church songs. Are there you know? puppies around? I need puppies. Sure, no, I, th- I don't know. I think it's, I think it's still a fascination. Like I said, you know, public execution, uh, back in middle ages or dark ages when they had when they had plague everywhere and they saw death on a daily basis, there was still big crowds. But what if that was justice? What if it wasn't necessarily just voyeurism? What if that's just like, yeah, that motherfucker, I want to see him hang, you know, we don't like, I don't know, you know, maybe, I mean, uh, but that's, but that the, it's justice. I want to see that motherfucker hang is the person who identifies with Jason killing all the people. Yeah. It's like, it's the same thing. Mm. The shows. (laughs) Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Mm, There it is. Yeah. But I don't think this movie's that deep. <laughs> like, no, just... actually, yeah, no, I think you're right. Uh, Drew, Drew Goddard grew up in Los Alamos, and he grew up around a lot of scientists. And he didn't they do bombing stuff? Tests he ca- he came he came up with this idea because he would see these people just going around doing their just normal routine mundane lives. And he thought it was comical because they're making weapons of mass right. destruction, mm. and they're like talking about they're like, all right, we're going to detonate this nuclear know, inf- bomb today. Yeah, they're. They're making these nuclear weapons, but at the same time, they're having a discussion about, you know, infertility treatments and yeah. his kitchen cabinets. My wife's his going around cabinets. putting these, <laughs> yeah. like, child locks on all the kitchen like cabinets so we don't even have a kid. Yeah. So that's what inspired him to it's make this, be... <laughs> this underground, like, the the um, the control room right. of the cabin. Almost yeah. like that office... Uh, yeah. environment where it's just kind of the mundane yeah like what it, it literally is water cooler conversation it is it's water cooler talk st- as yeah. they're killing young, as they're young setting adults. off to like, kill make the sacrifice yeah it doles, the, <laughs> it doles that information out in a way that like the first time you go through this movie is extremely effective i think because yeah. Yeah. it oh, yeah. it never gives you it's well you don't know the whole ancient one like right. that's still a mystery that this movie has right the first right. time you see it is well, right because you're wondering time, are they like, doing it for pleasure are people watching this like why yeah. are they doing it why yeah. are they doing it and they kind of like the they foreshadow the 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 basement you know, right or the cellar mm is foreshadowed in the dialogue before we actually get to see it. So it's like, that's the yeah. first time, because you're sitting there, like, there's all these scenes of these guys in this, like, NASA control room, mm-hmm. and then there's these kids on a completely, you know, the horror movie that we came here to see, and, like, what can, you know, how are they connected to mm-hmm. this? And it was somewhere right around there when I was like, okay, this is where we're actually saying that they are guiding everything that's happening up to this moment. And then the kids have to go in there and make a choice. And then they're going to mm-hmm. flip all the switches and control, you know, the, mm-hmm. the monsters that come after them. <clears throat> it is kind of funny that there are multiple ha, scenarios. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> ha, ha. That was Colin laughing yeah. hysterically. Uh, Sound like Egon. Uh, Ghostbusters too. Uh, uh, like, yeah. ha, 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 ha. There's multiple scenarios Sorry. going around the world where apparently this uh, so every so every so, world government is is part of this uh, ritual. You have to be, or it'll be the end of the world. Right. So everybody, including has- Sweden. With the thing, <laughs> which is yeah. I, which you, I never noticed it before. Yeah, I never noticed. I haven't that. watched this movie in a while. Yeah. but you saw it. I'm like, yeah, that's a burned down fucking. Uh, Fucking it's an, thing it's with a, a helicopter driver. That's yeah. fucking the thing. Yeah, <laughs> it is. So Sweden has the because the Norwegian, the Swedes. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't see yeah. what was the King Kong with the horns. I didn't, I didn't see like what that Malaysia was. Malaysia, yeah. something, something like, like that. that. Something like Skull that. Island. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, that's it. The, there's and the Japanese girls. It's so funny with like the, oh, the ring, the J ghost. I was yeah. like, that's so oh, fucking because hysterical. it's so <laughs> on point. That's it the is. thing. It's like they have nailed it. Discuss, you know, like narrowed down on like what. Every single culture's horror story is. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I think, I mean, that just comes from, I mean, 
every fucking episode of like Buffy and Angel, you know, they had yeah. to pick one thing from either like something that sounded like fairy tale or from movie. I remember the my favorite episode of Angel is about a, the mailman that was a luchador, like one of those luchador <laughs> superhero guys from the 40s. It's like oh, yeah. fucking hysterical, dude. <laughs> like the fact that the one episode talks about luchador horror movie. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's so fucking great, dude. It's like those guys know the genre. Yeah. They are definitely students of uh, everything horror. Yeah. yeah. But the, the, the other surprise of the movie, I guess, is that you know, as it lays this stuff out and as you discover, like, the the layers of, like, what's actually going on here, once our heroes abandon the, as I'm saying, the, the final, there's final girl, basically, and then the fool the survives, virgin, right? Whatever. The, the yeah. stoner dude. Uh, Marty? Marty. And Dana? Mm-hmm. Marty and yeah. Dana. But they end up... Which, I'm sorry, that has to be... Because of Sigourney Weaver? <laughs> that has to be some fanboy references right there. I, I was thinking Marty Back to the Future and Dana's and probably Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters yeah. But I mean, Kurt was uh Kurt like Russell? Chris uh Chris oh, Hemsworth. Maybe Chris Hemsworth. Chris Hemsworth. Yeah. And the other girl, the blonde girl. Yeah. I want to say Julie, but I don't know Jules. why. I think it was, Ju- was it, it was Julie. Jules. Yeah, Jules. Yeah. Yeah, Jules. Okay. It's yeah, always Jules. It's one. always Jules like Return of the Dead Three. See our previous podcast. <laughs> Julie. <laughs> but once they make it to the behind the scenes of this uh you know once they make it into the subterranean layer like that do you think i mean this is one of those things i always think like do people do this subconsciously or do you always ride in when you're going to you go down the rabbit hole right you're always going down the rabbit hole but that's they went also, in the elevator. I mean, that's people. like a, <laughs> they went that's down. a Freudian thing, right? Or that's psychology. Yes. Or Alice right? in Wonderland. Going you know, you, just, yes. yeah. you always have someone go into the ground if they're going into their mind or whatever the fuck, right? Which the stoner dude was right about everything trying to control them and like whatever the fuck. Yeah. So you're going down on the rabbit hole oh, to uh, prove them right. <laughs> <Fuck>. <laughs> That guy is just like perfect. Oh, perfect. Like, what's so his great. name? Fran something? Franz? Fran Kranz. Fran Kranz? Yeah. Has he done anything else? I uh, don't know. He was in Donnie Darko in Orange County, and he's done a lot of TV work. Yeah. yeah. And the lead girl, I don't recognize her from She's anything. On House of Cards. House of Cards is her big one. Yes. Yeah. Oh. And I she watched was Corey show. Stoll's she girlfriend for the uh, oh, first two shit. seasons. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's you. her big claim to fame. Yep. But once we get into this, like, subterranean layer, the movie, like, opens up in a way that I did not, to be honest with you, expect. Yeah. (laughs) Because all of a sudden, it becomes a multi-million dollar movie. Right. Yeah. And there is, because down in the depths of this place, they have the menagerie, where they keep, apparently, every single... uh, Spook... Or creature, ghoul, like. monster, <laughs> everything. Yeah. 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 Uh, Bad dragon. One of the best like werewolf costumes you'll ever see. I in liked a movie. it. It's great. I love it. I want to see that in a movie. I kind of do too. And I'm, How like, did, I'm like, not a big every... fan of werewolf movies, but I'm just like, that's a pretty good one. <laughs> I liked it. Good costume, including Fornicus, the Lord of Bondage, and what the fuck was his name? <laughs> I, I thought his name should have <laughs> been Sawhead, right? That's Sawhead. That's what they. That's what they refer to him as. They saw it. Yeah. Sawhead. So yeah, I you said like what? Fornicus, the Flor- Fornicus, Fornicus, or something. Lord of bondage, Fornicus, the Lord of bondage and pain. Uh, yeah. something he's got like a little that. puzzle box, credits. little like circle, circle puzzle yeah. box. Yeah, he's the Hellraiser uh, stand-in. Yeah, that's pretty pins. funny. He has saws and stuff. Uh, you'll be Very happy funny. to know that Sigourney Weaver was also a really big fan of the werewolf. They oh, said they said that every day she came to set, she'd be like, "Is this the day? Is this the werewolf day?" <laughs> <laughs> she was so excited about the werewolf. Oh, that's that's a cool practical yeah. suit. It's it going to be a dream for uh, yeah. any. I mean, like you know, an actor of a certain persuasion. Just doing this type yes. of movie, right? Would be yeah. fucking crazy. Maybe not for. I mean, I would think it'd be boring for the kids, but like for those other guys, yeah. like doing those. <laughs> right. That's got to be the funnest <laughs> fucking <laughs> shit. It's so fun. It's like a sitcom. It's just like, I get bored every time it goes back to the horror movie. I do. It's like, I want to go back to the sitcom but where there's that, still monsters. Does that only kick in at a certain point in the movie, though? I think there's a, there's a tipping no, point. No, I'm always that way. Like, this whole movie, I want to be with the... Because they're the fun ones. Everything else is just, like, random run-of-the-mill horror shit. Diamond the Dozen horror shit. Except for when the pothead's always mentioning... 
how things are off. Yes. And then, like I said, the more you watch this movie, you can look at all the little things and notice where, like, oh, you know, here's where they say this. Right. Mm -hmm. This is where he notices that, or this is, you know. Well, it's because the control room guys are the deviation from the regular formula that they're presenting to us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, And that's where the fun is. That's what's boring formula. (laughs) Well, well but I think, I mean, that may be on purpose so that you get the feeling when you go back to the control guys, you're like, oh, okay, because... They're messing with the formula. Well, or you're you seeing imagine? how they're creating the formula, technically. Mm-hmm. Well, because imagine, I mean, I, I have no, like, I have no proof of this. I have nothing, whatever. <laughs> but I'm going to say it anyway. No, because, I mean, I've listened to the commentary on this yeah. movie before, and they don't say nothing like this. But it's like, but imagine, do you think at some point they might have tried to make this movie the other way around, where you would focus on it like you'd be watching a normal horror movie, and then it would get fucking... All the back behind the scenes, right? Instead of flipping it the other way yeah. around, I wonder. You know what I, mean? I wonder that how much like, of editing, or I mean, I, I feel like the writing came out like this movie. You think? I think so. Maybe I, would, I don't know. And I'm, I don't only, know. And I'm only saying that because it's Joss Whedon and Drew Goddard. Yeah, like that they purposely went in but, that direction. But right everybody off the bat. always. Like, once you get into, like, they always, people are usually always separate the writing from the making from the editing. Like, they always say, make your own movie, make it, don't try to fucking stick to your script and all that in editing. Just make it what you need to make it. I do wonder I'm not saying I know this is, I can just see how they can, they could have done it either fucking way. But this is the more entertaining way. Yeah. (laughs) But then when it really gets to, like, the nitty gritty of it, that's why it's like, I get so fucking bored. That's why, like, the stoner comes back at the right time in this movie, you know, because, I don't know, I just really, as soon as they find the black room that's in the little journal of the hillbilly, that's when I'm like, I don't give a fuck about these people. I want to go back to the fun guys. But what's happened is at that point, you've lost the, like, the thing that, like, kind of keeps it going. And again, I'm not saying any of this is bad. I'm just saying, like, up until then, your interest is sustained by the, the character banter and all mm-hmm. that. Like, yeah. they write really good characters. So even when you're with them, you know, it still feels fresh because of the, what they're saying to each yes. other. Yeah. It's really witty dialogue. But once you get to the actual mechanics of horror, the suspense scenes, where they're not talking to each other, it's the music is playing really loud and yeah. the hillbilly family's throwing the bear traps at them. Yeah. It's like then you've well, gotten the into the tra- visual <laughs> tropes of that type of horror right. movie. And that becomes like, Okay, I want to get back to the, you know, what's going on in the in the the yeah, yeah. booth. Because at that point, you're like, I'm just watching a B horror movie yeah, right. that I kind of don't care about. Although when they get to the black room, one of my favorite things when I first saw it, I'm like, all right, I love this movie. Is when after she stabs to death the one of the zombie guys, and he just like flips a switch without really talking about it, and it electrocutes the knife out of her hand. Like, that's why people always drop the weapon. Right. They supposedly oh, yeah. killed the bad guy. I'm like, all right, I love this movie. But you would think, <laughs> that she, is you would think yeah. she'd, like, look at her hand. Right. That's but, the but only thing that's so a little shock. weird. But, no, yeah, I yeah, understand. Yeah, yeah, being yeah. so in shock of what's going yeah. on and what you've just done that they're just like, zzz, and it's yeah. gone. Like, yeah. love it. Right. Like, you just stabbed a zombie to death. Right. You're just not like, really going to worry yeah. about why you dropped <laughs> your knife. Yeah. Did you know that uh, no. Heather Langenkamp, the what? star of A Nightmare on Elm Street, she's Nancy for all those people. Did her people group do like don't a work on this? Yeah, her husband is an actual you know, Nightmare yeah. Seven. That's like Nightmare Seven I mean, or New yeah. Nightmare. Or New oh Nightmare, yeah, that's, yeah. yeah, it's not whole, Nightmare Seven. It's not. They it's did a lot Nightmare. of uh, <laughs> uh, costume work on Star Trek and above. They do a bunch of stuff. Yeah, but they did all the, or I guess they were the primary company contract to deal with the monster yeah. stuff on this. Nice. Huh. So, I mean, but at the end. Like, I was just sitting there, like, in awe of watching all of these screens, you know, when the shit is going crazy (laughs) in the control room. They've lost control, and they have all these screens, and there's, like, shit happening on every single one of them that somebody had to go out, create, and sculpt a, you know, creature. Dude, I love the... film these scenes. Like, the (laughs) scorpion robot. Yeah, it's got the saw blade. I fucking love that. It just makes me think of something out of a Charles Band movie, you know? It's like, oh, I love that guy. Murderbot. Yeah, yeah, giant cobra, big whatever, tarantulas. Chopping mall it's or the whatever. type of yeah, or whatever, right? It's the, this is the type of movie where like if you saw it in theaters, as soon as it was over, you're like, fuck, you know, like I want to see all those I scenes see all again. <laughs> yes. You know, like 
I need to dissect this. Well, even the board, when they're betting on yeah. the board, you just want to go back and, I mean, I knew. Which everybody did. In the yeah. theater, it was like, as soon as this hits home video, yeah. there's going to be screen caps of that board. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because of all the shit that they've got there. Or that scene where, you know, it pulls back from them in the glass walled elevator. Right. And you and see all the cubes. Like, all the, the cubes, cubes full of the monsters. Yeah. 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 No, it uh, just and then the, the that scene where they spill out of the elevators and just kill oh, all the, kill everybody. Oh, it's just amazingly packed full of detail that you cannot get on like a first. Yeah, it's like viewing. a horror movie candy store. It's yeah. just fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Well, I also like it because you, to me, I mean, you're rooting for the company. I am because it's like they're right. Yeah. You know, I like how when they go in there, there's that the Sigourney Weaver voiceover where she's like. Like this have went horrible. Hey, this is you bigger know, than like, you. This is bigger than you. You, know, you just need to fucking give up, and you know, I like that. Yeah, it's very depressing. Because <laughs> even when they when they make um, the first kill, they show the two guys in the control room, and they're ma- saying a little prayer. Right. It's like they have respect for what they're doing. Right, it's just because in the bigger picture, it's important. Yeah, like they, yeah, they get see they actually, but they actually don't. This is why I like the point of this because the point of the of the stoner and the from the get go is like we just need to let the world burn. You know, we just need to fucking, you know, we don't need rules, we don't need whatever. These guys have, these guys have accepted a corrupt system that allows for the murder of their fellow man. You know, that's what I like about like. Like, I agree with, in the scope of the movie, of letting gods come out and destroy humanity. Yeah, I can see how, like, oh, I'm totally for it. But I like how the kids write, how it's like, I don't think of them as good people. Because, no, these are people that would kill you just to save their own ass. Yeah. Someone that sacrifices you. They're also trying to save save the world. world. But it doesn't matter. That's when... That's, uh, that's the, the point. Good. The whole I mean, point. Hey. But is it the greater James good? James Bond does that shit all the time. Because this is how. This is actually how. Like the fucking like. Uh, I'm gonna get this wrong, but this is how like the Aztecs w- like wipe themselves out, right? Fucking sacrifices. It was the Incas. You're wrong. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Didn't the Aztecs take the mind? I don't know. Anyway. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, the point is, is once your society starts to sacrifice. Uh, you know, your own people for the betterment of others. That's the, that's is it really the betterment. Well, that's what they, well, that's what don't, I'm saying. But like, once you look at any sort of sacrifice in society, it's always for the betterment because number one, they're usually running out of resources. Once you start running out of, re- this is what everybody's talking about now, man. Everybody's talking about how we need less humans on earth. Now that way we can all live better. How do you fucking think we're going to get there, dude? It ain't going to be by choice. No, one's going to stop breeding by choice. They're going to fucking do away with us. We're first. I'm yeah. trying to think of an example from like an action movie where something an similar happens. Movie. Where there's the guy who has the okay, a Mission Impossible, right? There's a guy who's got his finger on the trigger that's going to detonate the bomb and destroy all of New York or whatever. Sure. And Ethan Hunt has to take him out, Ethan, or Hunt. and save the world. So by killing that one guy, you save millions of people. And there, it's justified, right? Because he's well, that's the, the problem. He's teaching you to like. It's pretty much he's demoralizing. Trying to, he's trying you. to murder like you know millions, millions of people, and in this case, it's a gigantic, colossal demon god from. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but let's look at this. It's the it's the Batman we, Joker but to, argument, but that's right? The thing, you have to <laughs> kill. I was gonna say it's the fairies from the Dark Knight. It's when the it blow up your boat or blow up theirs. Mm-hmm. But Batman had to prove that, like, we're not as sick as you. <laughs> yeah, you can't be as bad as that. You can't. That's the whole I was like, point. I giggle stone face. That's why. Human, that's why he was. Oh damn! Right. But I always have a stone face. So yeah, that's there you go. Ha 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 ha! Yeah, you'll never know. Ha, 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 right ha. There. That was hilarious. That was hysterical. <laughs> Uh, but, so yeah, I don't know. I see it both ways. I, you know, I think this movie does a good job at showing it both ways. Well, it's got a very apocalyptic ending. Oh, yeah, or is it is an great. anarchist ending? I think maybe more that the because this is what always happens. You know, in my mind, with when you come down to two people, and they have to choose, like either you kill him and and save the world, or you let you know humanity so bad that we're just going to let someone else have you know these great big demon gods take over and you're going to die you know as well and it seems to in that moment like these characters like don't have any family or friends or a connection with humanity yeah right 
And that's why they would make this decision to like, nope, I'm going to let let the let world it go. burn. <laughs> like, what right. are you talking right. about? It's just like, don't kill you love, the dude. Don't you love people? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably kill the. Dude. But in the like, movie, and you know, when they when they have society characters, too sick, man. always have uh, a, like a very like they it never really seem to have an extended circle of people. Everybody they know is in the movie usually. Yeah. You know right. what I mean? So there's not like that. Uh, I would hope that real people would make a different choice. Maybe make the hard choice. Uh-huh. Would you? Would you? Would she have? I mean, she never really got the opportunity. Well, she was going to. She got bit by she was a fucking werewolf. Him. Yeah, she. She was like, I'm, "I'm sorry, I'm gonna shot you," and he's like, "No," and she was like, "I probably wouldn't have." Right. We don't. <laughs> yeah, that's the story giving her an out. Right. Like she gets attacked, so right. she doesn't even wanna, get a chance to choose. You don't want which hate is a her good way. Yeah, you don't want to hate her in the end. Yeah. yeah. I think that's it, right? Yeah, and right. So it's like we can't her right. from any kind Let's absolve of... our characters so they can just sit there for the end of the world. Well, because we secretly want to see that in the movie sure. after all this like setup been of this us thing and like, the base giants yeah. are going to kill Except for the, the world. The yes, big, please. just like human hand. That's when you're like, oh, fuck you. You guys messed up, you know? Should have been a tentacle. Should have right? been a tentacle. <laughs> like, you can't be talking about old ones and ancient ones. It's like, if, they didn't if, look like us. If you're going to have a hand, well, because that's a titan, dude. That's what I'm saying. If you're using a human-looking thing, that's a titan. That's not an ancient one. That's not an old one. Those Just things right. look very fucking octopus-like. Uh, titans. Yeah. According Jason to the Argonauts. HP very Lord important. Perfect, at least. But I like the way that it does, you know, it's like, okay, you know, all uh, narrative, uh, you know, quibbles aside, the it does give us two things of wish fulfillment that we want to see happen. In the movie, one we want to see the old gods come mm-hmm. back, you know, even though you know maybe right. narrative. Oh no, I know. do. We want and, to see certain characters live, even though they only live up until the end of the movie. But we want to see what happens, like in the in the B story or the A, however you're seeing it. The guys in the in the, yeah. the control room. We want to see what happens when it's over and they complete their their sacrifice and we get to see that we do you know it's like the movie is able to give you that and yeah. then immediately like take, take it back it yeah. yeah they got from the red phone it is <laughs> it is nice they to see them partying and everything and then just to have yeah. like what i love that shut like the shut the fucking, music, the fucking, music, fucking music, music off, off. Like, that's a good scene right there because uh, you know how serious i'm is, glad right? they did not try and go pg-13 for this movie oh yeah oh, i'm just God. glad just like Let's go right well, you, can't, you have to have TNA in a horror movie. Yeah, you have to. That's the problem with today's horror movies. They're all PG third fucking teen. Oh no, I'm glad they went for it. Oh yeah. They started a horror movie off the right way. Uh the virgin has to be well, you don't she doesn't have to be in her underwear, but you gotta see her in her underwear in the first like two minutes. What does that do? Does it just super feminine? That's for you. No, that's for you, the guy audience. That's for like, I want to see this girl in her underwear. Usually, she comes home from school, changes her shirt for some reason. Like, like I, like this is my play clothes. <laughs> like, yeah. is that a thing? This yeah, no, that's clothes. a thing. And my school. Yeah, yeah. women have the play clothes it's, and shit. Right. No, no. As well, soon then as I, I you know what? Movies. Then no, I no real. longer think it's sexploitation. No. Now I just think it's accurate. As <laughs> soon as I get home from work, I put on my comfies. As I this call is them. my work bra. These are my work. <laughs> Panties. <laughs> I yeah. must take them off. I do. Never mind. I I'm house, good to go. I have house bra. I have it's yes. Like gone. House yoga, bra. Yoga pants. Yeah, completely changed. Well, there you go. <laughs> so if only a horror movie would do it real, like where she would look like a homeless person, <laughs> like when she's in her like her PJs right. or whatever. Where's the raddiest, holiest? Yeah. yeah, there yeah. it is. <laughs> I'm wearing it. That's legit. Funny. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, anything else before we close? I think that's it, I guess. We got it. I think we got Kevin <laughs> in the woods. All right. Well, then, uh, let us summon Igor. Igor, where are you, sir? Masters. Masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising. Rising. Igor, for those of you who don't know, is our mailman. Thank you very much, Igor. Thank you, Igor. Igor brings us stuff that uh, you, listener, write in on Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show or Twitter at Sat Freak Show or the old fashioned way at Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. And this week, although this is kind of dripping a little bit because it's got Igor slime all over it, yeah. <laughs> Justin Michael I, writes I don't in, know if that's a slime. <laughs> 
Oh, <laughs> I'll have to oh. examine. Like, yeah, that can we just like, can we get a, can we get just, a sample? You know, just, no, I'm holding it by. Yeah, the just uh, make Egon, sure you wash your hands with some bleach later. <laughs> don't get it. Don't hold Spores, it near me. Molds and fungus. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So Justin Michael writes in about Cabin in the Woods, saying, "I think Cabin in the Woods is pure meta genius, and if Jaws isn't on Holly's list, I'm out." LOL. <laughs> Still the scariest masterpiece I've ever seen. It gave me an irrational fear of the deep end of the pool throughout my childhood. The, the definition of effective horror. Uh, Nick Hammond writes in and says, I love this movie. I just let our teen son see it for the first time the other night. And he said it was cool. Whoa. <laughs> All right. About uh, cool, Dad. About Return of the Living Dead awesome. 3. Oh, shit. G Money writes G-Money. in. G Money. G Money. Come on, back me up, G Money. Don't let me down. Like, He's Why? about to let me down. <laughs> oh, he asks a question. Oh. He says, Hopefully, you guys saw the unedited version. That oh. one had great effects along with the smoking hot mom from the OC. Oh. That's Melinda Clark. So, so we saw that version? No, probably not. Because we rented it. We went to right? it on Voodoo. So it's although, probably just a normal although, edit, right? I think we I saw the what, R-rated version. Yeah, whatever's on Voodoo is what we saw. Yeah, because we did not see that. I wouldn't be surprised because when we watched uh, Castle Freak, that was like the, I think the... Uh, unedited? I think it was the unedited version because it was very gory. But I don't know if there is any other version right now of Castle Freak except for the I thought director's I heard there was, cut. Oh, but that's... I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it seemed good to me. Because I never uh, heard of another <laughs> cut I can't of, imagine uh, there being a more gratuitous or gory cut of Return of the Living Dead 3. I don't know. It From could. I mean, I mean... We saw a lot. I mean... There's before. always more. Sure. I can't tell. It didn't, like, strike me as, like, oh, my God, I can't we'll believe to see they if it said, got away with it. Well, I don't right, know. But it also straight didn't to video, like so it could still be back. unrated. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, they really showed her putting herself together with pieces of spice. Well, I'm never going to watch it again yeah. to find out if we saw the Yeah, uh, guys. So, I mean, I'll, I'll let not. everyone... I will do research and let everyone know... <laughs> yeah. What, if what at we all missed. we missed anything. I don't think we did, but I will check. <laughs> I will check. Thank you, G-Money. Oh, shit. Do you hear that sound? Oh, man. The hour has come, sirs. Thank you, Lurk. Thanks, Lurk. Lurks our butler. He's come around to tell us that it's time to do wrap ups. Where we're going to go around the table, and each each one of us is going to tell think you. Lurk was in one of those cubes. Oh shit! Oh, shit. Yeah, it probably was. I think <laughs> I saw him in one. Why he has such a lovely personality. There you go. Locked in a box until we need him. And that's Sorry, where he shows Lurk. up every week. Sorry, Lurk. All right. So who are we starting with, Sean? Colin. Oh what shit! What did you think of Cabin in the Woods? I uh, really enjoyed the movie. I mean, like, I've watched this movie on several occasions, and each time it still holds up. I don't think anything really compares to the first time you go through this movie. But I think, okay, well, two points. One being, uh, in the movie itself, regardless of the marketing, which I grant you is a tricky thing to do, but the the shot of the eagle crashing Mm. into that, uh, invisible wall. Mm-hmm. If you would take that out, you would save like two thousand dollars. <laughs> 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 Probably, that, that, yeah. but that way the the Chris Hemsworth death would have come as a surprise and have been shocked. Agreed. Yeah, yeah. Right? agreed. And yeah. it also but maybe they didn't want to confuse the fuck out of you. They probably got scared. Like, yes. uh, but it also I think that's the first thing that links the uh, you know we see the underground the control room guys and then. That's the first like sci-fi kind of weird world, thing in the like, outside Ooh. world where you're like, so this is all in a bubble that I get it. They're inside some kind of force field. That's if you would have emitted that scene, I think it would have been, you know, definitely more surprising. Yeah. More surprising. Yeah. Um, but regardless, uh, I mean, I mean, what I'm saying, I like this movie. I am a through and through horror movie fan, so like he is. If you didn't know from the 200 <laughs> previous episodes, yeah. Well, for the, those Come of you who are just those. joining us tonight, oh, um, hello. The the it's like a it's I, I right after seeing it, I'm like, okay, this movie compares the most to me to Scream, right? And this kind of the it's a postmodern horror movie where the people making the movie are making a movie about horror movies, mm-hmm. right? Except Scream was uh, focused on like a particular genre of horror movie right. and a dissection of the layers of why is you know a slasher movie specifically an eighty slasher movie works. 
where Cabin in the Woods seems to be concerned about like why horror movies work and how mm-hmm. horror movie, you know, so it's going after like a bigger target, you know, yeah. with a more obviously comedic edge, but it's very mm-hmm. clever. It's very singular. Uh, but I like it because I'm a horror fan and therefore I'm very accustomed to the tropes of horror movies. And so I can pick all this stuff out and, and yeah. recognize that these are the guys behind the scenes. This is the metaphorical stand-ins for movie makers trying to craft the ultimate horror movie to appeal to their, uh, the demographic, the audience mm-hmm. that watches horror movies. I've recommended this movie to people because they said, Hey, what's a good movie to watch? And I say cabin in the woods because I had such a fucking fun time with it. Yeah. And I am told repeatedly mm-hmm. that it sucks. Mm-hmm. Uh. And I'm like, what, what fucking planet are you on? But they're like, no, it's like, so you know, and I'm doing the motion of, uh, you know, somebody giving the elbow in the ribs. You know, it's like, you get it. You get it. I'm clever. I'm cl- I'm really a clever movie. You get what I'm saying here? And they don't like that. But I don't know if I get that off of this movie. No. To me, it this is movie never a horror me. fan peeling back the layers of why horror movies work and why they appeal to us, mm-hmm. you know? Uh, so it's going after, like, something, you know, bigger than just, you know, trying to be, uh, you know, smarter than you. I right. think that's maybe the thing. They, they, right. the, the feeling from the people who don't like it is the movie thinks that it's smarter than they are, and it's it isn't. Obviously, they can yeah. see, you know, and so that's I think their problem with it, where it's like I, I don't think that was the intent of it. No, or else they no. wouldn't have shown the eagle fly in the first because it's not trying to be smarter. It's trying to give you little clues. No. It's, it's trying, trying to give you questions, yeah. but it's, it's not. It's also trying to say like it's playing to your awareness. We it's see what you like see. You, we right. love what you love. You're just exactly. you're just waiting yeah. for it to connect. Yeah, the whole movie. You're just waiting for it to connect. Yeah. that's it. Yeah, those fucking people. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I thought it was. Uh, I mean, yeah, if it ends up on your list of top 10 tonight, Holly. Yeah, no one will fault you for that. Yeah, because I think it is like, you know, and just watching it tonight made me realize again, like, man, I really do like this movie. And, you know, I don't, I think, give it the, uh, you know, the credence that I should. Because, you know, you watch it and you're like, no, watch that again in 10 years or whatever. But it's like, I think, you know, it is a good movie. It holds up. There's a lot to see and layers to peel back. Because it's jam packed with, like Ali said, the candy store uh, for horror movie fans. Mm-hmm. So definitely check out or love, just love Cabin in the Woods. Yes. Colin, I feel almost the same way you do. Like it's almost, it, it, uh, almost. I mean, quite. most. I mean, like it, it, it's a love letter to. Like I said, it's the it's filmmakers who know what I mean knows what horror fans knows what they like knows what they see and it's just giving you uh just kind of a little altered perspective um on those things and I think it's uh, I mean I love it I, I think it's really great um the the actors in this like who doesn't love Bradley Whitford like oh uh, he's, he's almost like tailor made for something like this considering his like just the witty banter considering his background with like Aaron Sorkin TV shows mm-hmm. and whatnot and everything he's yeah, like he's West Wing he, right? West Wing and Studio, Studio 16, 16 on the Sunset Strip okay. like he's Fantastic, perfect yeah. for this um, Richard Jenkins is also top notch I love that guy and I, love everything I mean just love come him. on who doesn't love him but yeah. I, I mean I love those characters I love what they do with this um, uh, I think I mean I think it's great um, it's, it's not trying, like I said, it's not trying to be smarter than you are. It's just trying to say like, Hey, you know, we love it too. We see it too. Mm-hmm. This is for you. Um, mm-hmm. I, it's 4.5, uh, mermen out of five mermen and definitely watch and love this movie. Mm-hmm. They're going to go with the blowhole scale. Blowholes of blood <laughs> out of five blowholes of blood. Oh Lord. Holly, yeah. What did you think? I of, recommend, uh, I mean, I the movie. <laughs> I recommend this movie, but I have always like like I the first time I saw it, I thought it was fucking amazing. But then the more I watched it, the more I personally have some issues with it. Not that I don't think it's fucking hilarious, because I mean I love my horror comedies, you know, and it's like I mean, you know, if there's like a subtotal of like seven horror comedies, this is in there, you know. Mm-hmm. You don't have a lot to choose from. But my only issue with this is the horror aspect of it is a horror movie I would never watch anyway, right? Like, I don't, you know, like, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how to explain that. Like, if, really? if a ho- I feel like it's horror movies that we watch all the time. 
But as but, close as analogy is but, probably like no, I don't watch. Yeah. I don't watch like hillbilly zombie stuff. I just don't. You know, that's not my bag when it comes to horror movies. You know. And the fact that half of this movie is that type of movie, it just always drives me away from watching it. You know, even though I love the movie, think it's funny, I'll always talk about how great it is. The other half of the movie that it is, I fucking really am bored with. I can't stand it because I really think what could have changed this for me is the death scenes. I think the death scene, it's like if you're going to go there for it, it's like all we get to see is... Is they need to be more gory. I don't know. I think it has to be they that, ha- though. I think it has to be to more make the gory? comment. There, no, no, no. I, think it, I mean, it is, it, but it's kind of like what straight is, up the middle horror movie. No, but the, I think it like has to be. You're not to make the. Well, comment you're not listening to me. The reason that what I'm talking about is, uh, yeah, you're not. You can't. What I'm talking about is, uh, they don't go all the way because they need to fool you that the stoner is dead. So they can't go all the way and show you the whore dot. You know, they sh- they go to like a back shot and they slice the neck because they don't want to show it. Because when they do the next thing with the stoner, they want you to think the same thing. Drags them over the hill. You hear a whoosh, and you hear and you see blood splurt up. Right. It's like that's kind of my issue with this movie. And then then it's Chris Hensworth just like hitting an invisible barrier <laughs> with a motorcycle then it's the boyfriend or the whatever the uh, the, the scholar the, the scholar or whatever fuck sickle yeah he gets the sickle through the whatever which oh it's supposed to be surprise you know it's surprise that. whatever but that's like so that's it it's like this so that's where it's like fuck it's missing the horror thing for me even though it's got everything else because like I feel like this is like a Buffy movie like I put this in that world like Wolfram and Hart oh, yeah, it's like need bad. to be you know <laughs> yeah is behind this but that's the only reason i don't watch this movie like i like it i just don't watch it because i don't fucking like the hillbilly zombie i think it's so boring and the characters are just kind of like they're hitting the beats they have to do for the movie right to make the horror movie right the movie you really want to watch are the behind the scenes guys and i think that's just a i don't know that, but that's just being like a major fucking devil's advocate. I like this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, everybody. I like this movie. Sorry. But I don't fucking watch it. Like, because it's like, I, yeah, think- I, I really feel that way. Like, I don't watch fucking. No, you have to wait some time, I think. In it's because it's funny. I wanted to, yeah, I watch it for the comedy, you know. To really appreciate yeah. it, I think you got to give it some time in between watches. Yeah. I think that, um, I think that it plays the way that they don't show. Those deaths right away because it builds up to when they actually show the kids getting really killed, like the what is it, an ice pick or something through his head, whatever it is. The, it goes through. But that's just one. That's I know, one. but, it, but, but it, that's not an eighty but slasher it's more, movie. But it's more surprising when it happens because it didn't happen with the other but it's, ones. But that's not an eighty slasher movie. You know what I'm saying? Eighty Neither slasher movie. But half of the movie is. So yeah, <laughs> it is. Half of it is. Well. I don't know. I love this movie. I I absolutely love it. Um, I, I I agree with you that the first time you watch it, it's so special. It's just, it brings you to this whole different place. Um, and I said it earlier, it's like a candy store for horror fans. Um, I think the monsters are just everything that you've ever wanted from horror. Like, it's just... Is there a big Cobra movie out there? There's a big movie. Python movie, dude. A, yeah. Anaconda. 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 Yeah. Well, I think there yeah, was a but that's sci- a big Cobra. Yeah, I think yeah. there's a sci-fi movie called Viper. I'm sure there's something. Else. And in Resident <laughs> Evil: The Game, there's a big mutated uh, there snake. Is. Uh, there is. I don't know why that's the one I go to, but that's yeah. the that's my experience in horror. I remember that as a like that's the very big true. fucking Cobra. It's very true. <laughs> um. Yeah. This. I think this this writing in this movie is absolutely fantastic. Um. I, I I do agree that the that the horror movie plot part is a l- is slower than the underground plot, um, but I think it has to be. I I think that they want you to look forward to seeing the behind the scenes, and I think they they want you to look forward to the dialogue between the the two guys in the control room, and I think that even I think it mirrors that in the scene where they think everyone's dead but the virgin's still alive, and the the zombie is like attacking her on the dock because at that point they're not even paying attention to her anymore. They're just partying. Mm. And I think that's kind of reflected like, yeah, we don't really care about them either. We're doing our thing. 
I, I think that's kind of reflected of that. So I think it was kind of um, on purpose that you don't really care about the horror part. You care about the behind the scenes part because that's kind of the whole point of the movie is that you care about this process. I think that was intentional. Um, yeah, I love Joss Whedon. I love Drew Goddard. I think this is absolutely brilliant. I'm so glad that these two minds got together and had this dream because it's just... Oh, Jesus, you're getting all romantic yeah. about it. I love it so much. Hey, man, it's not wrong with the fuck is it? all getting romantic. I, I, just know. Lost. I love it. I love it. I, yeah. Sorry. You do you, boo. You do you. Thank you. Getting a little choked up. Boo. No, I love boo. it. It's great. That's it. All right. So that's <laughs> Kevin. Cultural, you're cultural, my cultural boo, appropriation. Travis. Colin, cultural. you're my boo. Bust you're my boo. boo. So wait, before we lose everybody to the booze, uh, now we're going to hear boo. that moment that you've all waited boo. for. Oh, shit. That's right. On our continuing series, now we're going to hear Holly's top 10 favorite horror movies what? of all time. Holly's a top 10. All right, so here we go. Top 10 horror movies of all here time. Here we go. Are we going numbered? I numbered them when I did them at work the other day. So these are ranked. This is so you actually of put your the work favorite. in there. I, I don't know if it. Say it now. Are you going to be held to it? God. It's being recorded. Least the worst. Worst the least. Yeah. yeah. What? What do you feel? Hey, just... Okay, not in order. Not in order. Oh, okay. Right. <laughs> no one's going to. Okay. Call him but... First one, I got to go with Scream. It's the movie that made me realize that I liked horror movies. When I was like 11, 12, whenever it came out, I was like, oh my God. I've been avoiding horror movies my whole life, and I love them. What's going on? So Scream was a big movie for me. It's nostalgic. I love it. Uh, the Ring, the first movie that actually scared me, so that's a big deal. Um, it's a mystery and a ghost story, and I love both of those things. Still freaks me out. Uh, Fright Night, very well-rounded film. I love Chris Sarandon, who doesn't, and it's a fantastic story. It's just, it doesn't get old. Uh, the Shining. Um, no matter how many times I watch it, it's still very unnerving to me. And I know it's a controversial movie. I know. I get it. I know. But it's still unnerving to me. I like that descent into madness kind of thing. Like I just really love the the crazy, the craziness. Um, yeah. Uh, Cabin in the Woods. Obviously. There it is. <laughs> there it is. Obviously. Um, Why? Why do you like it? No, I'm kidding. Um, I we think just we already went it. over that. Yeah, I think we went over it. Um, Justin Michael will like this one. Draws. There it is. There it is. Jaws. Um, it's Wait, like, is that on there because... Is that a horror no, movie? No. Show us the paper! It is. I don't count she it as a horror. I, I mean, I know this could be like a big like conspiracy, but yeah, I don't count Jaws as a horror movie. See, that's why I didn't have it on my list. I like, do. I it, consider it a we, horror movie. This, yeah, come on. I had this argument with my Friday brother. Friday the 13th is Jaws on land. No, it's not. It's Psycho meets that uh, was a horror movie for Halloween. Me. Yeah. There are definitely horror, big horror elements in the movie, but a horror no, it's not I, had a this, movie. I had this argument with my brother too, and yeah. I think it's a horror movie. Okay, yeah. it is classified. I won't, I won't take that away. It from is anyone. classified as a horror movie. I won't take that right. away from anyone. Who? Many people don't yeah. want to go in the water because of that yes. thing. It taps into a it's, fear. When you go yeah. into a video rental store in 1989, what section is it in? Horror. No, horror. it's not. Yes, it I worked is. in a video it's store. In store we yes. I worked at two. It's in the horror like section. Four. Shut up. Six. Whatever. It's on my list. It's iconic, um, and I just love that it's like a real life horror movie. Like it's a real, it's it's something that can actually. There's no be such out thing there. as a real life horror movie, folks. Don't believe her. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Wait, how many is that? Um, that's five. Five. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> An American Wolf in London, mm. entertaining as hell. Great script, still funny, still plays. A lot of movies that are from the seventies are dated. This one's still good. It's from the eighties. God damn it! I'm sorry, eighties. Okay. I'm sorry. Right. Was it? Was it 80? 1980? 1981. Okay, whatever. Well into the decade at that point. <laughs> well into. Well, I was. <laughs> oh boy. I wasn't born yet, so. But us. Uh, Psycho. It's Hitchcock. It's ultimately creepy, and I, we all go a little mad sometimes. It's one of my all-time favorite movie quotes. I think it's just great. Dawn of the Dead. My favorite. Which one? I know. I know. <laughs> I actually battled myself on this one because I like both of them. I really do. Which one? God damn it. Choose. Well, which one do you like more? I'll go with Georgie. George Romero. I will. Good choice. Yeah. 
you know how to Partly because I don't want you guys to get left out of that pressure. You can choose whatever you want. Partly because I don't want you guys to assassinate me. Yeah, the, other one, the other one had <laughs> a baby zombie. zombie in it. Baby. Yeah. <laughs> if it wasn't for the baby zombie, I might be like, eh, but it's like that's too fucking ridiculous. Fuck that. I do, love, just I do love them both, though. And <laughs> it's my favorite zombie. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, Carrie. Uh, I love Carrie. Carrie's a good one. It's fantastic. It's a great story. Plug it up. Love it. That's it. That's my list. There you go. There, you go. there it is. All right, so now you've heard it. So next week it's going to be uh, my pick, uh, uh, or my top ten. Yeah, I'm still working on that. It, like, changes day to day. It's That's weird what I'm saying. Thing. It's, it's, a lot. it's an ever-evolving it. it list. It's going to be, like, the top ten list for that day. Then it'll change. We should just oh, do an stop episode of list. Stop quantifying yeah. it and just pick. <laughs> this week, it's a totally yeah. different list. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I think for Halloween, I'm going to do, uh, we're going to talk about vampires oh, and the many no. faces of Dracula. And we're going to watch the Frank Langella 1979 Dracula. Fantastic. So that's yeah. next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. Monsters for Halloween. And until then, the basement is going dark. <laughs>